All right, well, welcome to the Football Friends podcast, episode four. Four, this, four Offici- this officially yeah. four. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, so yeah, it's been another good week of Euro Euro games. Extremely good knockout round. Yeah, um, with some big results, and you know, I feel like y- you can take it from here. And <laughs> okay, well, um, obviously, I want to start with we've we've had a, an extremely dramatic. Um, and emotional round, especially for the game that was uh, Wednesday, Wednesday morning here in New Zealand, which was England Germany. And for the first time in, God, I can't do maths. Is it fifty-five years we've beaten Germany in a knockout tournament game? And. Um, anyone who tells you that I was crying um, wasn't there and didn't see and would have no knowledge of that. Um, so yeah, on, on, on with the actual game. Uh, we lined up in a, well, you call it a 5-2-3, f- a you can call it a 3-4-3. Three, well, three. well, i got to say, actually, I, I, I think that this is probably the best way for you guys to set up because you have the three at the back, one of them's Kyle Walker, so then you can get Trippier on the pitch as well. Yeah. And then, well, that, that's a good start. That's that's an interesting way to put it because I, I think that was the best way to, for us to set up against Germany. If we set up like that in our next game, I don't know if I believe in that. No, I don't know. Ride the wave. Well, yeah, but it's it, different tactics for different teams. You know, we we had to. South Southgate said it himself. He had to. He wanted to like match them out do something to cancel out their fullbacks their wingbacks rather who were extremely effective in the group stage mm. particularly against Portugal so it was Shaw and Trippier sort of defending against them and doing admirably so but I, I think that was a great choice though they both played fantastically um I think well I my player of the game was Luke Shaw. Absolutely. Who, I, I don't think he got it officially, but he was mine. It was Harry Maguire. Who was really impressive as well. Yeah, even then, uh, Harry Harry Maguire had two great header, header opportunities that he sort of he and... d- uh, there was Yeah, there was one in particular that, mm. uh, you know, on, an, on another day. Yeah, I, I would have said Luke Shaw as well, just because he was involved in both goals and... He set well. He set up the winner. Hmm. I know we scored two, but he set up the one. Yeah, yeah. So, look, words can't even begin to to tell you how massive this is for for m- me personally, and for the Eng- like the 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 nation. We we we're, we're so used to sort of. Like res- being resigned to being second best to specifically Germany and to you know any major team. You know, if we draw a Sweden, if we draw a Ukraine, if we draw a U- Colombia, we think maybe we we you know we'll probably scrape this if we get through. If we draw Germany or Brazil, we we tend to think we're done. Oh, and um, Pl- <laughs> playing the victim, I see. Um, look, look. <laughs> Yeah, you're, you. So what you're saying uh, you is, know, I think, y- and I y- hope Ukraine's the favourite in the next game. Uh, England always the underdog. Yeah, Eng- England <laughs> will uh, not win. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I. Or I, what I am saying is, it it feels good to actually finally turn one around. Yeah. You. Uh, well, I, it's I good. Feel, to, it's always good to get one over the, on the Germans. On know? the yeah, on the on the, our rivals. You know, two world wars, one world cup, and a Euro. Um, quarter final doesn't exactly have a great ring to it, but it mm. feels pretty damn good to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, to, to be fair though, I mean, like Germany doesn't have like the defence it once had. No, it's sort of um, yeah. You guys should be picking that apart. Um, yeah, I, f- I feel like that's that's true, and we, you know, we we squared up against them and. All these, all these players who seem to have had criticism, you know, 
Luke Shaw keeps getting dug out for looking overweight. It's like, dude, he's a prof- he's a professional where, athlete. Where, where are you reading this? Because oh, okay, he just he just it's, had like the best season of his to career. Be fair, it is mainly then, social media, idiot, and he's been crushing. Idiot, he idiot. he's he's been the best performing left back for England. I agree. I agree. Mm. It's this is from people who sort of don't watch football. Take a look at a guy who isn't sort of mm. five foot seven and like a lean slight guy and go oh he's overweight well I, I think <laughs> I think they probably treat Sterling a bit worse I definitely well Sterling was the one I was going to come on to so yeah yeah cause what does what does this guy have to do he scored he scored three of our four goals he scored three goals in four games yeah he's been it, the one scoring all the goals it, it, <laughs> and they're like oh he's not playing very good I mean we ragged on him a bit earlier as well but yeah I agree and he's proved it, yeah. He's won me over. He's yeah, proved I me agree. wrong. I agree, yeah. You, you've said it yourself. Southgate is the guy watching the training, taking the training, mm. picking the team. Southgate has suffered, you know, slings and arrows. Oh, it's been a whirlwind. Like, every time it's <laughs> opposite end of the spectrum. Yeah, it's, a, it's amazing. Um, but there's something to be said about, you know, putting a fairly average group stage performance behind you coming up against a top five team in the world and just putting it to bed. Uh, yeah, yeah. Whatever he's whatever he said, I mean, the first 10, 15 minutes of the game, we were bang fucking average. Mm. After that, to- who's Tony Cruz? Like, uh, yeah. th- that's really harsh because Tony Cruz had a really good game. Yeah, but I mean, well, it was just, it was just more their defenders, you know, like they were all old and you can or whatever and you can get around them yeah it's it seemed that we were able to pull sort of Ginter and and Hummels around Rudiger had a good game Havertz was the one that I was really really scared of he created mm. created a chance for Werner who true to form well, well that's actually the other thing is they did start Timo Werner so you probably didn't need to play three at the back well maybe not but that's I the three wasn't for Timo Werner. Mm. The three was so we could allow the wing backs to to wing back. Yeah, yeah. But uh, every I think I don't think there's a single England player who played who I have a bad thing to say about. Maybe the only the only thing I have is um, Sterling's back pass, which was basically a through ball for Thomas Muller. Mm. Yeah, but then he then he missed it in the end. <laughs> Unbelievable! I've put. I've put my house on it. I don't own a house, but I would have put everything on Muller yeah. scoring that. Yeah, yeah, I know. That was a pivotal moment. And if he had have scored that, it would have completely changed the momentum of that game. It was one, it'd be one all, and then it could have been uh, to- totally uh, different. And then who knows? Um, and uh, but but again, s- I mean, Sterling dropped to his knees and sort of p- prayed, mm. and we got another chance, and we. We put it away, which is unlike England. We would normally, after that, have got scared, mm. sat back, parked the so parked yeah. the bus. And that's why you can't drop Harry Kane. <coughs> Again, something we can't fault Harry Kane for. Maybe some of his play has been average, but his attitude is... Yeah, he's top got, notch. You gotta let him play into it, man. He's a and then he's, he's a model professional. Oh yeah. He'll just be better from here as well. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe. <laughs> Look, e- either way, I am completely stoked. Mm. And um God I, Yep. I just hope we can look, lift ourselves from here. That is difficult. Look, you got to rise up to the challenge of Ukraine. Well, that's that's the thing. <laughs> Ukraine. It, it is, would be classic England, wouldn't it? It would. Go, <laughs> the Ukraine game. Germany. Go, Ukraine go game Ukraine. is a very different challenge to playing against Germany. It's forever the underdog. Well, <laughs> that's not, I'm not trying to claim that. I'm trying to claim that. <laughs> trying to claim that it's a different game. You need to approach it different tactically. You need to approach it different mentally. And going into a game as an underdog is different as going into a game as a favourite. Yeah, okay. I, I mean, I don't know how you can disagree with that. 
Sure, sure. You're just making vague statements. Well, it's, it's not even that vague. <laughs> I'm just... I'm. Yes, you have to think differently about different games. Yeah. So, mm. which is what I mean... But come on. I, you, you just need to be having a more positive attitude here. Like, you should put these guys down. Yeah, we should. Yeah, yeah. Things are sort of starting to fit together nicely now. Things are starting to click a bit for England. And... Mm. Look, I'm happy. I'm stoked. Yeah. I can't not be. I've got my flag up in the living room. I've got my shirt in the mail. Still in China. Mm. Thanks, China. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I don't really know what else to say. Are you, are you happy with that? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, so my my week was probably a bit worse. Uh, yeah, yours went a little bit different. Mm. Yeah, uh, real shame. Shout out to uh, you know Matisse Delict. De uh, things it was, just sort it, of just go downhill from that point onwards. It was foolish, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Clownish. Well, He's a silly little boy. Yeah. Um, just yeah. Uh, that you know we we were going good, and then that happened. It sort of wrecked things a bit. Yeah, well, up until that point, the Czechs didn't really seem to have a clear-cut chance. And about a minute before that, they did. You know, Marlin goes one-on-one. Mm, the keeper, uh, I yeah. mean, of course, the, the keeper makes a good save. He needed to hit that early, yeah. He did. Mm. Uh, the keeper makes a good save and distributes, and within about 60 seconds, we have situation where Delict is handling the ball mm. and I mean talk about one moment just sw- a pivotal moment switching the game on its head oh yeah that's course. that's yeah. the one yeah and from that point onwards it didn't seem like it was going to change everyone sort of gave up and, um, <sighs> yeah. yeah it's it's unfortunate that sometimes a more mentally strong team or maybe just they needed to be better who knows oh yeah and look we don't have the we don't have the same firepower as some of the other teams in this tournament but um that's fine i think you know we got to move on from here we got to we have weaknesses that need to be addressed and but still a lot of positive came through this one we actually played pretty good and we know who the the who some of the main players are going to be in the foreseeable future from this so yeah we can yeah. just it's not all doom and gloom and we all know that mm. sort of, you know, one of your key defenders getting sent off with half an hour to go is... Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that it's a, it's that a lost killer. us the game. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's bad. Like, I mean, I want to just, like, rip him out, I guess, but... I mean, go ahead. Yeah, well, I don't know. It just doesn't seem to have, like, improved over the years. You know, it's supposed to be this big deal. Um but yeah, I don't know. We we la- we really lack the leadership of Van Dyke in this one. Well, that's that probably we would have been completely different. That, um, that's where I was going. Like, do you, mm. he wouldn't have made that mistake if he was playing yeah. next to Van Dyke. Oh, maybe he would have, but then Van Dyke would be like, "We'll be fine." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he could just be the back three on his own. Yeah. Well, with the way that Dillard didn't have a very good tournament either, he was sort of looked a bit stumbly and clownish, and well, yeah, he's still. It's difficult to remember. This guy is still a very young man. Mm. He's what, twenty one? Young, young. And he's made a huge transfer to one of the biggest teams in Europe, and is expected to be a leader as basically a child. Well, I don't think so. The team he's moved to is full of leaders. No, but is he expected to be a leader for Holland? Oh. Uh, I suppose so, but like not when Van D- Van Dyke is the captain. Yes, I understand that, but Van Dyke is not present. Hmm. But yeah, I don't know. I think maybe that when he played for Ajax, he was a leader, but then he moved to Italy where he's not. And then so when he comes to Netherlands, he doesn't he hasn't worked that muscle. That's an interesting point. Um, yeah, he doesn't appear to have developed since moving to Juventus, which was where he was supposed to go to. To learn, learn off these, learn from the, Je- the Jedi's of, yeah, of the defending Jedi basically. masters. Yeah, 
So what you're saying is the council has not granted him the position. Of not master. yet. He's still cooking, man. He needs to, yeah. Yeah. So, but is it is it time to execute Order Sixty Six? Well, it makes me glad that we didn't spend like a hundred mil on him or something at for Man U. Well, that's that's a good point. I think he probably would have, um, he probably would have struggled even more in the Premier League. I yeah. think I think that Italy was the place to go for him. Hmm. We see big players do these things in major tournaments. They have these mistakes. They you know, mm. kick out at someone. They miss a penalty. They oh yeah miss yeah. goals. The what they play poorly. This guy has you know twelve, thirteen, fourteen years left on his career, mm. at least. Yeah, you know, no worries. Yeah, well, it doesn't. Yeah, we don't we don't need to dwell on it for too long. No, it's um, it is what it is. But it was full credit to Czech Republic. Play good football, and um, oh, I hope they go far, man. That's that's fun. Yeah, it's it it, always, there's always a few that surprise you. Yeah, you know? it, it's good to see. And there was a few surprises in this whole group oh stage. Oh goodness! Well, the whole um, round of sixteen, round of sixteen stage. Mm. Yeah, fantastic. Um, it was good to see Schick back on the scoreboard as well, mm. getting the second one. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's it. A few people will be sniffing around him, I think, for his talents. Yeah, he's um, it's been impressive, and of course, they've got Denmark in the next round. If you've got Casper Schmeichel to compete with, hmm. it'll be a very interesting face-off. Well, look, I mean, uh, I got to pick Denmark in this one, of course. Like they're playing for their teammate Christian Eriksen, of course. They've got they have when you think about it they have one of the biggest inspiration to actually going forward from here. Yep. I mean, they won their last game 4-0. Like, Did you see some of the Welsh defending, though? I, I don't care. They're, they're, they're a team that is playing playing for their player and looking good. I, Look, I, I agree. Den, Denmark have, you know, since the start of the Russia game, effectively, hmm. um, stepped it up. But Russia... Uh, average and Wales are probably just better than average and they and they fair enough they demolish them but I mean like that's what we'd be saying about Czech Republic or what we'd be saying about Switzerland you know and these are these are teams that just knocked out big big nations yeah absolutely so I mean it it doesn't matter I'd like that's that's kind of where the the Denmark will be a challenge for anyone yeah especially the Czech Republic yeah, so Denmark's definitely my favourite on that one. It is always interesting to see sort of two, I don't want to be too demeaning, but smaller footballing nations, certainly smaller than you know France and Spain, um, go up into a quarterfinal. And you know one of these guys is going to be in the last four. Mm. Fantastic. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, God bless him. Yeah, well, I suppose we can uh, move on then to... Well, I suppose we, we sort of should jump to Switzerland and France, of course. Oh, like, my so, goodness. So there's another one that, you know, it, another smaller nation that people don't doubt. And what, then they France? Take, take out France, you know? <laughs> yeah, this this was my match of the round. Mm. I oh. mean, it, England aside, England's Th- match doesn't count. It was thoroughly good. Like, uh, I don't know, kind of, yeah. France is kind of choked, man. Like, it's it's unusual to see. Normally, say when well again, this is another match where one moment completely changed the outlook of the game. the 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 penalty for Switzerland came, I think, on the fifty second minute. Hmm. Rodriguez missed. Yeah. And, you know, France keep possession for a little bit. Hmm. And then Benzema scores on 57. And, yeah. oh my God, what a goal. Oh, incredible. That first touch uh, was oh, the creamiest I've ever seen. Did he mean it? Yeah, definitely. Did he, like, did he mean... Yeah, he it, took, Of course he did. It's, ama- it's amazing. He's, he's doing it deliberately to play himself through like that. <laughs> he's basically... Exactly. Th- he's, he's... It's like a Rabona through ball Jedi master man yeah, he just, the, yeah he's been granted the 
title of master. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. World class player. Yeah, the and thing- then he's dinked it on his left left foot as well. Mm. Beautiful. As, yeah, a true work of art. Amazing. And then about 90 seconds later, he's grabbed another one. Uh, Griezmann with the cross, and he's banged it in from pretty much under the crossbar. Mm. But you've got to you've got to score them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, Griezmann, Griezmann teared it up, man. He was looking lethal, like just playing very good for France in this and tournament. And then they took him off. Mm. Yeah, I, they seem to put a lot of faith in Mbappe, man. And he he probably deserved to be subbed at certain points. And I I feel like he gets this privilege of because it's Mbappe that he will be on the pitch. Well, that's interesting you say that because. I feel like someone who's actually, not that Mbappe hasn't earned it, but someone who definitely has, is Antoine Griezmann. Probably, possibly the best player, okay, maybe not, but in the realm of best player for France at the World Cup, in the realm of best player for France at this mm. tournament. No, I thought he played really well. I yeah. thought he played really well in this game. Mm. And then he was hooked for Sissoko. Uh Pogba bangs in his own goal, which was um, that oh that was that was an incredible goal. Paddy Paddy Shirk will tell you that's the second best goal of the tournament. That oh, I don't know, man. That Benzema one is pretty good too. Like, it depends on what you like, doesn't it? I there's mm. I mean, personally, I like a long range goal. A long range goal will always blow my mind. And someone mm. who's done it from halfway, it can't really be topped for me. Um, but yeah, Benzema's, I, Benzema's would come very close because that's an unbelievable piece of skill hmm. in an important game. Pogba's, Pogba's was just the most Benz, you know. It, it, oh, it, it was so good. It was, <laughs> mate, you could have put a postage stamp in the top corner. It would have hit it. Hmm. It was beautiful. Yeah. It, amazing. But, there, but yeah, but then... See, that was it. I think they just made negative. They played, tried to play negative football. They tried to shut it down, and well, then maybe I mean re- they, relaxed. And I feel like Switzerland. I feel like Deschamps made negative substitutions. And I mean, starting with Rabiot left back, left wing back. Well, that's was like, an odd one. No, it's because that's the only one they have, right? Uh, the, I mean, y- the yeah. other two left backs are got injured during the tournament, and they have no other right backs. So that's kind of. The, at that point, they should be playing a left midfielder there. I feel like that's... Look. Who would they play there? I don't know. Komen. Well, no. He, well, Rabiot's the most defensive. Uh, yeah, and I don't know if wingback is a defensive position. Well, it's like, you know, he he offers more, I think. The, he didn't seem to offer much when that, the cross that, came over. But that position Sibarovic. isn't like a forward position, and Kingsley Komen is a forward. Yeah, um, but I think look, I, I think Rubio played okay. He he wasn't too bad. I don't. The problem was Kimpembe and Longley. Longley. They yeah. both they both made crucial errors that led to those goals, and just fucking gave up. It's true. So, you know, France led with ten minutes to go after the momentum hugely swinging in their favour, and they seem to take their foot away from the gas well i think it's just the you know what happens is um when you don't have top tier players they the pressure gets to them and certain players on this pitch let the pressure get to them um the thing is i, I don't think Kimpember or longley i mean longley is well out of form for barcelona but he's should still be able to deal with this. He's, he's still a defender. Yeah, they just... They, it's like they've given up. And, yeah, and then, of course, we have... They were just trying to coast out to the end of the match, and they, they let it slip. So, Seferovic scores on 86, I think. And mm. even at that point, I was watching, and I didn't think that the Swiss would do it again. Oh, I felt it. I felt it immediately. But I was th- like, the spike. Oh, they're going to they're gonna do it. And that's... Like that's what football well, does to you. Like you watch enough and you mm. start to f- like. It's the not, match did not feel over. It's not a thinking thing. It's mm. you can feel it. And I think honestly, I think France were probably a bit cocky. 
Um, yeah, like the cock on their shirt. Yeah, they. I mean, they win the World Cup, and confidence is high, and I think they're coming into that thinking like we're the best, and you get you get knocked down. Yeah, yeah. And then you know the the period of extra time far less dramatic than um, mm. the Croatian Spain game. Yeah, yeah. But um, very touchy. Well, it's a couple of opportunities. One for Mbappe. Yeah, Mbappe saw that's probably the time he should have stepped up. And and he seemed to... Mm. A little twinge on his knee, a little injury perhaps, and maybe... Mm. Who knows? Uh, you know, every, every player stepped up and nailed their penalty. Mm. Pogba's in particular was a smash. Well, Pogba was my man of the match for sure. I thought he, he was as well. He was incredible. He, I thought his, he was his long passes were amazing. It was so good to see. Yeah, he inside was, of the boot, outside. It was fun to watch him. That's the thing. That's what I want to see. Incredible. But then Mbappe, yeah, just no, nah, didn't couldn't step up to the plate. Well, that's again the the tactic. I mean, Pogba was still allowed to do what he what he does because he's a world class player mm. but it felt like with the two in midfield he had a little bit less protection I know he had Kante but they seem to outnumber them sometimes in midfield and I don't think he should be getting outnumbered by mm. Switzerland well there's a like granted Xhaka played like the game of his life Xhaka was and, amazing and smoked N'Golo Kante in like every move yeah so I, I think and Kante actually switched off a bit as well which is unlike him. But I, maybe they were just wrecked because maybe they did go through the group of death and all of those teams are out now, right? Yeah, the group of death killed them. Rest, yeah, yeah. Rest in peace. They all died. So rest in peace. Um, I, I think maybe that was just it. They just they just ran out of gas and they also had lost two left backs and still had to play all of the same players and yeah. they're probably a bit wrecked. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, of and then they had to play 120 minutes as well. And so. I mean, look, Sometimes people call penalties like a, a lottery. Oh, it's the flip of a coin. Mm. I, I don't agree with that. But it is an intense situation where a single mistake mm. or a single inspired save will yeah. will turn it around. Mm. I mean, you saw Larice getting close to one or two of them. Mm. Put his hand on well, one L- of them. Larice had already saved a penalty. So, like... <laughs> that's, that's right. I mean, Larice is not the guy to blame in this situation. Yeah, yeah. He's... Yeah, but then, yeah, Mbappe. I mean, Mbappe's penalty is like going to the bottom corner. It's just well, the not, it's, it's not just, really. It's no, I so- think it is. It's, it's, just, it's soft, sort of it's sort of curling. It's it doesn't the, go in the bottom. Well, but it's the goalkeeper just predicts the right way and yeah. saves it. You know, like it's. I think if yeah, he just he got looked, lucky. He, he looked tired running up. I don't think it's luck. I think mm-hmm. if you're a top keeper, you can. You, you know you have certain keepers who are extremely good at saving penalties. Sure. And sometimes they, I mean, they know, they certainly know better than what we do, not being goalkeepers and not mm. being professional athletes. Um, but they, you know, they can, they can watch and they can know. And Mbappe looked tired walking up to the ball. Yeah. Like, he didn't run. He didn't smash it. It was mm. relatively soft as far as, penalty kicks go oh, I don't know I thought it looked pretty good but either way I thought it was far too uh, yeah. I think it was far too close to Sommer mm. well yeah you know it's probably going to save one it just so happened to be Mbappe so well you know he, he still was yeah. involved in two goals in that game I don't think like yeah look the, the, the man to place the blame at, uh, in, uh, it sounds like you're putting the blame at the, the French defenders which I don't think is unfair um, hmm. Well, no, it's just they all switched off, like, and like the, no one was even jumping for air balls. They, were, I mean, none of those players are actually any good in the air anyway. Yeah. All like Varane's always been partners with Sergio Ramos and shit, who wins every ball in the air. Yeah, and, and you're playing against this guy Safirovic, who's six foot three and built like, like a, a mountain. And all all of the that's what all of the weaker teams know that the easiest way when you're not the best team is to play that kind of football like crosses into the box and headers because it's the hardest thing in the game to defend it is extremely difficult especially if you whip the ball in fast and Mm. you have a guy up front who's 
yeah dominant and because the direction of the ball changes so quick rapidly that the keeper right. can't even it's, it's hard i mean the, the third goal sorry the second goal it's a fair bitch the ball was close to larice mm. but he can't stop it it's going too fast yeah exactly it's not it's not within his it's not within like possibility for him to stop it mm. um yeah i personally i'd place blame mostly at the feet of Deschamps. i think mm-hmm. i think his tactic was wrong in the number of ways that i've mentioned and like i don't know who you do pick in that left wing back i just probably would have well, played they, a back i probably would have played a back four they yeah they just ran out of players like yeah so i i mean that sucks but that's what happens and you got to be able to overcome that and but either way they should there should be no excuse for that they have if, even if they lose one position every other position is it's a world class player yeah so yeah there's no excuse which is something that switzerland don't have so you've got to yeah. praise their mentality their manager their players and say let's go quarter finalist absolutely amazing well, well yeah so well they've got to come up against uh spain Mate, who you know? I've just uh, what's that bor- boring football? Ten goals in two games. Yeah, up yours. Unbel- Every- unbelievable. <laughs> even even Morata like scored yeah. one of the again one of the, probably one of the best goals in this tournament. Dude, the way he took that, the way he took that down and then humped it with his left foot. And any goal which hits the roof of the net first, first yeah, yeah, is is up uh, there. A ro- everyone loves a roof. Is up there. <laughs> yeah, he roofied it. Yeah, yeah. He's absolutely taken it down. And up, yeah. Um, so that was an exciting match. Um, um, I mean, they had to go extra time as well. But what I want, I want to start with um, on the last podcast, we talked about us taking up the role of the dubious own goals panel. Mm. Um, Pedri, pe- pe- <laughs> well, it's an insane one. He's basically scored an own goal from thirty-five yards. It, does that belong to him, D- or does it belong to Simon? Oh. I didn't actually realize it had gone down as Petri, but yeah, I see. Yeah. What you're I did think it was more Unai Simons, yeah. Uh, okay, like, so we're we're granting it up. because he he sort of just. I mean, even if he doesn't touch it, he like misses his touch, you know. And yeah. He was yeah, in control yeah. of the ball. That's but. right. Even if that, even if that goes straight to him and he misses mm. it clean, yeah, that's his fault. Yeah, it it, it shouldn't blemish an otherwise perfect. Pedri uh, international career. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it should. Bomb him out. Forget about him. He's been incredible. He's done. He's one of my favourite players Sell him. for Spain now. Put him on, he's put Dude, him on the transfer list. Like he's keeping Thiago on the bench. Yeah. That's how good this kid is. He's 18. Yeah, mate. It's, Spain just keep churning them out. It's amazing. Mm. And um, they're so good yeah. that they can score your goals and still win. Yeah. Mm. Well, because after that, Simon was like in fire A man up possessed. And just saved everything. Apart well. from for five minutes <laughs> right at the end. <laughs> yeah. He, he made so many saves in that game too that could have been goals. Yeah. And, and Croatia looked fired up. Mm. More, certainly more fired up than they did in the first yeah. couple of group games. They didn't really look mm. up, to, uh, like up for it. Yeah. But and they took apart Scotland, and they mm. looked up for this one. Yeah, but, um, but in the end, I think Spain just had the better squad. I th- they yeah. had the depth. I and think, s- yeah. Yeah, like Sarabia again, just yep. ca- carving it up. Sarabia scored. Um, oh, for goodness sake, who scored? With the Espelicueta with the header? Yeah, his first goal for Spain. Mm. If, if you want to pick someone out who's going to be... Uh, Who's going to be in the oh. six-yard box floating around? And assisted by Ferran Torres as well, yeah, who he, also scored a fabulous one-on-one goal. That's right. Yeah, he had a yeah. he had a good game, mm. and he's coming into his own. That's, yeah, he, that's he in particular looked really good. Uh, in in a tournament, mm. all you really need to go far is just your your defense to remain solid and not make too many mistakes, and one or two players up front to just mm. keep turning over and Ferran Torres is a guy doing that 
Yeah, he seems to be looking really good. One for the future, for sure. Yeah, Sarabia hitting his stride mm-hmm. as well, and finally, after a couple of Well, that's um, good, stuff for, good stuff for him, man, because he's, you know, a bit part of the PSG team, and now maybe they'll be rethinking that. Like, Well, he might get some more game time. Or he'll leave. Yeah, possibly. Or get a move to somewhere where he can yeah, actually so play. They can, so they can finance Mbappe's yeah. next contract. Sign him up. Why don't you, yeah, sign him up to Liverpool. Why not? Uh, I'm not on the board of directors at Liverpool, so I've oh, yeah. no. Come um, on. S- s- flick, him, flick him a DM. Flick him a text. Yeah, it's be like. Hey, Pablo, get down there. This Sarabia guy's awesome. Yeah. Oh, and the last goal was a Yazabal as well. Yeah, the last goal in extra time, a um, mm. a, a man who uh, has featured in many a FIFA team. Yeah, um, Yeah, stealing in. Uh, um, praise for Danny Olmo, who came mm. on in the. Uh, Late in the ordinary time, yeah. Another player who set up good. both goals I like, in extra time. I like the look of Spain. I, I, so, would they have to play each other in the next round after this? Because is there any way we can see a Spain Italy final? <laughs> no. Oh, um, gutted. If Spain win and Italy win, they'll they will play each play other. Each each other. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Which um, was not last Euros, but the one before that, the final, and they won. Yes, yeah, where Spain won four 0 yeah right. So, uh, who would who would know? This is look. Yeah, well, I was thinking about it actually. It's like when you win the World Cup, you got to have like the best squad around, basically. But for some reason, you can win the Euros and not be the biggest nation. You know, like this um, last time it was, it was Portugal. They you know they they won it. They were an underdog in that sort of um, tournament. Yeah. It's it's almost like it has to kind of you, you have to have like a num a number of things you have to have a good squad or an average squad with a couple of outstanding players yeah. who are really hitting their form, you know. So what I'm saying is Denmark to win. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm I'm not even kidding. They could take Czech Republic apart. They could certainly beat Ukraine and they could certainly beat England yeah so they've, they've been imagine uh, that you see Denmark uh, Italy in the final uh, look Denmark room Belgium's group Denmark Belgium could be the final Denmark Belgium mm. in the group stage was a tight game which was basically won by De Bruyne mm, mm. coming on at half time uh, yeah yeah d- uh, I'd love to I know it. we've already suck Denmark's dick a little bit already but I'm going to do it a little bit more they they're good right they they, mm. they have the right balance of players yeah they have some youth some experience and a manager who knows what they're doing a goalkeeper who's well experienced and very talented mm. yeah there's no there's no reason that Denmark can't beat any of those teams um, it'd be fun that would be yeah, look, either I'd way like, everyone I always root for the underdog you know, way, that's fun yeah yeah. can we yeah, Can we just call, stop calling football tournaments by their names and just call it the, the, the fun league hmm. yeah well I suppose we can move on from some underdogs and talk about we might as well just uh, so the only like uh, next match we haven't mentioned is Belgium and Italy and that's what which is probably the... Do you mean, sorry, Belgium and Portugal? Hmm? Oh, yeah, I mean, well, we could talk about kind of both those matches. Like, you know, Belgium, as well as Italy, both sort of dispatched the other team pretty comfortably. Wow, I, um, I don't know about that. I thought Belgium, you know, f- towards the last 15 minutes, mm. pretty much Ali Lukaku was in their half. Yeah. yeah, sorry, in the opposition half. Well, th- yeah, and I, I Port- Portugal had shots flying in. There was deflections. They, uh, um, somebody hit the post. I'm sorry for not looking that up. Um, but there's, I think, I just, but I think like defensively, Belgium were sound as, and that was the thing. So as good as Portugal yeah. could play, they they weren't able to. They were, yeah, get through right. the they Belgium. Most defense. they were mostly solid. Yeah. And on a, another day. That shot flies in, or that deflection, mm. you know, hits a defender and goes in. It's, it was a very even game, and 
credit to credit to Thorgan has its goal. Goodness me. Absolute screamer. And, and another But but that was it. They they knew from that point they just had to kind of shut it down and like they didn't and let Portugal come at them. Yeah. And they control that's that was I think that was probably the smartest move. And they yeah, controlled correct. that game pretty well. Yeah, their 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 tactics were, you know, to to score. And afterwards they, they knew that Portugal had a huge attacking threat. And they they shut they, they shut locked them down. it down. They locked it down. They yeah. locked it down. Mm. They looked like Italy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. Um, and we've got to we've got to give credit to them. Because those those some of those fast counter attacks, um, you know they they look dangerous. Put Be- Belgium could have just about won by a couple goals on one of those counter attacks, and yeah. at the end they should have. Yeah. Um. And maybe, maybe even three nil if if Pepe didn't have his little way. Mm. That yeah, was yeah. that was my favorite. Um, I guess favorite yellow card of mm. the uh, of the tournament. Very deserved. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> we could have been red. He mm. kicked. He kicked the crap out of him. Yeah. And then yeah. stood there smiling. Just the most cynical thing ever. Uh, one, so. uh, the most Pepe thing ever. Mm. Like, oh, you mean Pep? Yeah, Pep. Big, big Pep. <laughs> yeah apparently it's pep who knew yeah look, <laughs> all this time i take that decision and i disregard it yeah i almost don't want to believe it um, yeah, i don't yeah i don't it like sounds it. wrong <laughs> but well so i suppose we'll see how they come up against Italy though because um it, you know belgium was putting down another team from the group of death and we think maybe that just took it out of them and they couldn't couldn't handle the next round so um Next, they're coming up against Italy, who has kind of cruised through this this much so far. So that's going to be the real challenge. And yeah, so um, that's going to be probably the the match of the of the round. Yeah, like, certainly another one. And you've got to wonder if that's going to take it out of Belgium. You know, playing these these good teams, it's going to mentally and physically drain you. Well, it's kind of the thing after. After this round, like the hardest, well, yeah, they're going to have two hard matches in a row, probably. So it's going to be against Italy and then probably against Spain. So, and then and then the final, and then Ukraine in the final, <laughs> Denmark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Denmark, Belgium. Yeah. So, um, Belgium's got a hard run, I got to say. And yeah. So look, so does Spain. So that that side of the draw, you'd say in footballing terms, is. It's completely stacked. Completely wrecked. It's yeah. completely stacked. Yeah. <laughs> but look, there's no there's no reason that the other side can't be just as, if not more, entertaining. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Either way, um, that's going to be the one to watch. Uh, that's uh, is that the first one as well? Bel- Belgium, Italy. Uh, no, the four o'clock for What's... New Zealand will be Switzerland, Spain. Okay, so that's next match, and then. Uh, Belgium, Italy, right, and then Sunday morning, New Zealand time. Mm. Um, oh, so tomorrow morning we'll be able to watch Belgium, Belgium and Italy. Sweet. And okay. Sunday morning will be um, Denmark and the Czechs, mm. and England versus Ukraine at seven o'clock. Yeah, right. Uh, which is just a blinding setup of games. I'm extremely excited. Mm. I'm sticking with my Italian prediction. Yep, Italy, Italy looks like still looks amazing. I think Spain look amazing. Um, Would you like to, now that the team you predicted has um, been eliminated, mm-hmm. would you like to pick a new one? Like uh, a team to support? I oh, know a team to um, cause, win. Because oh, well, I was going to say I, I want to. I'm going. I'm rooting for England now. I'm with. I'm with you. Oh yes. But um, we've doubled again. Uh. uh Italy was always looked good for me, but maybe I'll just back. I'll back uh, Belgium. Come on, Lu- Lukaku deserves a. Okay, that's fair enough. Yeah, Lukaku yeah. deserves a. Lukaku shot. with a golden boot. Yeah. And uh, and Belgium for the tour. Look, I'm really I'm really stuck because that's a hard game. 
Well, yeah, so we're basically saying that the result of that game is going to depend. It's going to be the winner of the final. I, yeah. I actually agree with that. Mm, true. And they will beat Denmark in it. Mm. <laughs> okay. Um, right. Cool. Yeah, so, so is, is there anything else, like, say, before we watch these fine games? Um, all I'm saying is I'm very hopeful that this Jaden Sancho transfer goes through. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm very hopeful that we see him on the pitch in white. Oh, yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. At least a couple of minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, other than that, i got nothing. So we'll just, we'll just leave it there, I suppose. Cool. Let's go, England. Yep, until next time, like and subscribe. Uh, yeah, that's all. Cheers. Bye-bye. Cheers, man.